When it comes to defending America, it is not enough to merely have an American presence in space. We must have American dominance in space. So important. Space Force, the ultimate eye in the sky. When it comes to warfare, whoever has the high ground has the advantage. This has been well known for thousands of years. But is Space Force the ultimate high ground? Or is it just another way for the Pentagon to suck American tax dollars out of their wallets and to make the aerospace industry richer? After all, the US Senate just approved $717 billion for the 2019 military budget. When is enough enough? And just a quick reminder that militarizing and weaponizing space has always been a bipartisan issue. We spend more on our military than the next 10 countries combined. China, Russia, France, the United, United Kingdom, you name it. Next 10. We need to be thinking about cybersecurity. We need to th be thinking about space. That's exactly what our budget does. Space warfare isn't anything new. The Gulf War, or the first Iraq War, is considered to be the first actual space war. This war used satellites and GPS to help troops on the ground navigate, communicate, and guide their weapons across the flat desert battlefields of Kuwait and Iraq. Some consider it an experimental war just to test many of these new weapons. Later, in 1999, during the NATO bombing of Yugoslavia, the US guided their bombs using space technology to blow up a Chinese embassy in Belgrade, killing three Chinese reporters. Many people believe this act was a message to the world that the Pentagon can do whatever it wants. The Chinese government later issued a statement calling the bombing a barbaric act. During this point, satellites were being used to identify and direct weapons to their targets. But soon after, the Pentagon released a document called Vision for 2020, proclaiming the need for full spectrum dominance on the battlefield. The document maintained that America would control space, dominate space, and deny other nations the use of space. This timeline matches up with the recent announcement that Vice President Mike Pence just made. And our administration will soon take action to implement these recommendations with the objective of establishing the United States Department of the Space Force by the year 2020. The Vision for 2020 document claimed that the U.S. would be the dominant force in space. In fact, on the wall of the 50th Space Wing building, it actually reads, Master of Space. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part, too. <laughs> so what would this new American military branch actually do? First, the Space Force would maintain dominance in space in order to control the Earth below on behalf of corporate interests. Then, after achieving the technology and skills to begin mining the skies for resources, the Pentagon will control who gets on and off the planet. They will be the only institution who will determine who can and cannot mine the skies. And it gets worse. Because we are Americans and the future belongs totally to us. Once more, we will launch intrepid souls blazing through the sky and soaring into the heavens. Award-winning investigative reporter Carl Grossman has written about these issues, saying, If the weaponization of space proceeds, it will be accompanied by a nuclearization of space. Reagan's Star Wars program was predicated on orbiting battle platforms using onboard nuclear power systems to provide the energy for particle beams, hypervelocity guns, and laser weapons. For decades, most of the world's nations have supported a treaty for a prevention of an arms race in outer space, also known as Peros. But the United States, despite whether there was a Democratic or Republican administration, has balked and refused to sign on to Peros. Not even sign on, the leadership of America won't even talk about it. The nation which has led in advocating Peros has been, incidentally, United States neighbor Canada, with China and Russia giving their full support. Not too incidentally, it was the United States along with the United Kingdom and Soviet Union that were the key in the creation of the Outer Space Treaty of 1967. 
they understood then the horror ahead by the arming of the heavens. Now we have a Trump administration, wild on issue after issue, which is extreme in opening space for war. It must be stopped. Many government officials have stated that China is threatening America's dominance in space, but Carl Grossman reported that an anonymous U.S. diplomat told him, China was 30 years behind in competing with the United States militarily in space, and Russia doesn't have the money. And if we look at the world military spending charts, it's easy to see that no country is close to America's spending, let alone spending on space programs. Former Secretary of the Air Force Deborah Lee James has been speaking out against creating a new military branch, while acknowledging that the Air Force is already operating in space. She stated, quote, I will say certainly there are tribes within the Pentagon. There are tribes within the Air Force, and so there are tribes with the Navy and the Army and right on down the line. A Space Force would not reduce those tribes. I would also say that using the logic of, you know, that space is terribly important, therefore we need to separate it out to be its own separate military service, if that logic persuades you, then I would argue you would also have to be in favor of a nuclear force. You would have to pull the nuclear forces out of the Air Force and the Navy, set them up, and I've heard it said and believe me, I think it's true, nuclear over time didn't get enough attention. A former Air Force officer, Brian Whedon, has stated that he's already heard some crazy ideas. Quote, I've heard everything from riding shotgun on commercial lunar missions to space-based solar power to everything else. Frank Rose, the former director at the Aerospace Corporation, has said, quote, We need to make sure we are engaging the Russians and the Chinese diplomatically. I know it feels good to hit the Russians and the Chinese over the head with a 2x4 and tell them how bad they are, but we also need to find a way to engage them diplomatically, especially on things like minimizing the creation of debris in outer space. National security reporter Spencer Ackerman puts it plainly, quote, On the one hand, Space Force is a foolish idea that solves no actual problems. But on the other hand, it's a great way to transfer money to defense contractors. The idea that the U.S. must dominate space is arrogant, stupid, dangerous, and highly destabilizing to world peace. The Trump and Pence proposal for a space force is largely driven by maximum profits for the aerospace industry. So we've now reached this critical moment where the expansion of warfare into space is being dramatically promoted and there must be an immediate counter reaction by the peace loving people around the world. And that is exactly what the global network has been doing for nearly three decades. Every year we urge local groups and concerned citizens to help put together protests and educational meetups every year for a week called Keep Space for Peace Week. During October 6th through 13th this year, organizations and individuals all around the world will hit the streets to help end the militarization and weaponization of space. Each year for the Keep Space for Peace Week has had a different theme, and this year we are focusing on stopping the creation of the new military branch, the Space Force. So come join the global network and help us say no to Space Force. Dark side.